Does anyone know what time it is? What? Oh. Hey guys, we're Tired at 40. Thanks for tuning in. Got a quick project for you today made out of pallet wood or fence picket material, my favorite thing to build with. And it's just a wall hanger, coffee mug, slash um, wine glass holder. So stay tuned. Okay, we want to take one of these pickets and we want to mark it out at 21 inches. So 21, 21, 21. You're going to have one little leftover piece and that should be about 8 to 10 inches long. Um, and then you're going to take the second picket and you're going to make one more at 21. And then you're going to save the drop off uh, to make the frame. Now that we have four cut at 22 inches, it will actually measure 22 by 22, um, so it's going to be a perfect square. Next we're going to make our frame, so you'll need a table saw. Okay, you want to set your fence on the table saw to an inch and a half. And your measurement should be on the outside of the blade to the inside of the fence. Okay, we're going to take our drop off from the rest of it, and we're going to run it down and we need two full-length strips. Okay, so I like to frame mine like a window. You can actually miter also if you want. Um, the way I do it is actually a little bit easier, but I think it looks better because it's framed like a window. Um, so basically square this up with one side of here, make your mark on the other side, and then we're gonna cut that. Once you've got this cut, you can go ahead and you can nail this in, or I'm using a pneumatic stapler, which is a little bit easier, but either way, go ahead and nail that first piece in. Okay, so take your second stick and line this up with the top. Make sure all of these are pushed down tight. And then you want to make a mark at the bottom here. And then you can flip it around. Same thing on the other side. Okay, last one, you just square up. Okay, now take your drop off. Um, you can adjust this for different sizes if your wine glasses are different sizes. Um, and ideally, a lot of times cedar or pine is warped one way or the other. Um, it'll have a crown on it. And I like to put the dipped this way up towards the top because you're going to have wine glasses sitting in here and it'll kind of naturally keep them in. Um, so I've made a couple of these and I've found that the center of this is just about perfect for a wine glass and I actually use this top line. Um, so what, it's going to sit like this and then you're going to want to drill holes, two holes through the back, uh, pre-drill those. Okay, so this is the back side and this is going to be sitting like this, or like this. So I like to mark the end here. And then your two screws, or you can do three, or however many you want. Let's do three for good measure. Okay, this is where it's decision time. So depending on what kind of wine glasses you're going to put in here um, will depend on how deep you want this. This is pretty thick. Um, we're going to cut out so these will slide in here. So to me, I'm going to take probably an inch or an inch and a half off and that will give it plenty of room to uh, account for the ball of the glass also. But some are larger, some are smaller, some are longer and taller. So I'll leave that part up to you. Okay, now that it's cut down, you need to figure out where you want your grooves to be. I like to kind of evenly space mine. So I went with three inches in on each side. Um, I like to cut out 
this uh, center part with a paddle bit. I use a three quarter inch paddle bit. Kind of need to figure out where the center of your wine glass is going to be. And you have to make sure that if this is the wall, that your glass isn't gonna, if this is in too far, it's gonna push it out this way. Okay, so then take something that's square. Square up your three quarters of an inch. We're gonna take a paddle bit and we're gonna cut a hole right in here. And then we're gonna take a jigsaw and then we're just gonna hollow this out. That's gonna give us our little place for the stem of the wine glass to slide into. All right, we're all cut out. It's time to sand. to get real creative. I like to lay everything out the way it's gonna be. If you're not real creative and artistic like me, I cheat and use stencils and I kind of lay everything out before I actually uh, color it in. And then you can use paint. I actually use Sharpies and before I trace it with a Sharpie I will pencil it and that way if, I, if it doesn't look right then I can erase it or sand it off. At this point you can change what it says. If you don't like what I put on there, um, really you can kind of change it to whatever you want. last part I kind of like to trace around here and I don't actually trace all the way around it I kind of just dot that's real light because the sharpies have a tendency to run on the wood they kind of soak into the wood all right our final step is to just put some sort of protective coating on here, I like to use linseed oil or tongue oil because I like the way it looks. Uh, you could also use polyurethane or something similar. Just be sure that you take extra precaution around your paint or your Sharpie or whatever you use to paint here because uh, you don't want to smear it. Well, until next time, this is Retired at 40 reminding you to live life simple. We'll catch you next time.